with um, Ian Abbott Donnelly again from uh, IBM Big Green Innovations. Always nice to see you. Okay, <laughs> it's really nice to catch up with you again. Yeah. Okay, so today I'm talking about IBM's Deep Thunder, and the key oh. thing about IBM's Deep Thunder is fine scale weather predictions that lead on to business impact modeling. So it's it's not really about the weather. It's about resource allocation, scheduling, routing, maintenance, quality of service of all kinds of business operations or public service operations. Yeah. So to give you an idea of, of what this, this thing looks like, um, we're doing cloud scale weather forecasting. So you're doing it not at a, a resolution that typical weather agencies do about 15 kilometers in their grid. We're yeah. doing it down at one kilometer. And we're not pushing the weather out to sort of five days, two weeks ahead. It's in the next 24 hours. That takes a lot of the risk out of the weather forecasting. It enables you to then allocate resources, make decisions on that weather. And because it's very location specific, the, again, the accuracy of the, the modelling is much more relevant. You can take real-time data feeds from those locations, combine that with the model. So your margin for error is very small indeed. Mm. So you probably recognise this as an um, example of Hurricane Wilma, so that, that's what the fine scale weather forecasting looks like at a visualisation level. This is a dashboard that IBM creates, in this case for Con Edison in New York, where you've got an interactive map of what's happening over the next 24 hours, but then you can drill down into specific locations. So if we look at Central Park, um, we can then see what the, the cloud, the wind, the temperature, the pressure, humidity is going to do over time, over the next 24 hours, in that specific location. Yeah. And that granularity then allows you to make the business decisions. Now, I presume a lot of businesses do consider the weather forecast in all yes. kinds of ways. Yeah. Oh, yeah, ice cream companies, uh, from ice cream yeah, companies to retailers, to retailers deciding railway. whether to put salad in. The, the but where do, where do you have, so what's different about this? Well, there's two things that are particularly new about this that IBM brings to the party. And the first one is about visualising that in ways that make sense to the business. So it's not really about the weather and, and weather maps. It's taking it from the, um, the meteorologist into the business analytics space. It's also connecting the data into the operational systems, your asset management system, your crew scheduling system, your resource allocation, your energy production system, your water treatment plant. All of those things are sensitive to weather, and you can take the data from these systems. Um, so for each of those locations, you get a full set of, of data feeds. It's coming. Live demos, I don't you love them? Um, but it, what it, that data allows you to do is transform that information into things that are useful in operations. So this is an example of the snowfall and how it will affect the New York highway system, where the accumulated snow is predicted to be over the next 24 hours. Mm. So they don't have to sort of sit around and wait for which roads do I clear. They know where it's going to need clearing, they can get onto with the red roads now, yeah. they can focus on that, as the weather unfolds, they get updated predictions of where it's going to be, so they can manage that network and optimise the impact of, of that weather event, rather than kind of waiting till it's happened and then clean up the mess afterwards. Yeah. Now, one thing that I'm interested in with, and it's just like all of these things, is w w what happens first, does the, does, you know, is in this case, was this IBM thinking we should, if we can put together this kind of thing, we can th we think we can get people to buy it, or is it actually often a bunch of customers that come with similar problems and then you find ways to well, it, meld the, it together? The, this particular project started um, really quite a, a long time ago, about around the Olympics, the Atlanta Olympics. Mm. What they wanted was a fine scale weather prediction for that one location because it, the world stage was set, people were watching, if in the opening ceremony or, or major events the weather's going to be bad, then they want to be able to cope with that in real time. Yeah. And knowing that there's a vague regional weather forecast that says it's going to be windy and rainy isn't good enough. So that's where it first developed. But what we've done is, is created a service out of it so that you can now apply that 
maths in lots of other locations. And you can then take that weather information and apply it not to the sports industry, but to transport, to electricity grids, to renewable energy places, which have got different weather impact models. And then taking that weather impact model, you can then move one step further and create a, a sort of recovery plan. What's, what's your ability to recover from that kind of weather? Yeah. And then you can take decisions that maximise your recovery. Yeah. So an example might be the road network in a city. You want to be able to store water on a road, not in a housing estate. So if you've got floods coming, the, a, ro a road can recover in maybe four hours, yeah. whereas a housing, housing estate recovers in about two years. Yeah. So it, it's that kind of optimising the recovery period that is particularly valuable. Yeah. And this information allows you to connect real-time weather through to the various models, the impact and the recovery yeah. model, for you to make decisions on what you do. So, so a question really is, you know, on, on how open or closed does the data um, become? I, I was at the GLA the other week, and there's an open London data initiative going yeah. on at the moment. I was at a meeting at, and um, you know, that was the, the, the London London Mayor sort of asking, how much can London open up its data in useful ways to people? Well, th this would be a good example. Yeah. Currently, our applications are industry specific, so the electricity industry or the transport industry, sport industry, whatever. Um, but if you could do it for a city, yeah. and then anyone in that city can use fine scale weather data, the kind of information that we, we're providing, they can connect it into their own business models, their own PDA applications that are relevant for them. Yeah. I think this could be a really interesting service, kind of a, a, a stormwater utility service or a, a, a drought service that allows a, a city to self-organise how it responds to extreme weather events. So rather than having to cope with it, you give the city the data. And so we're looking at cities like Birmingham and Peterborough and some of the, the leading cities that are looking at sustainability, looking at digital economies, yeah. and saying how can you get this kind of analytics at a city scale not at a regional scale. Yeah. Great. Well, as, as ever, it's always great, great to, <laughs> to hear what you're up to. Thanks, Ed. Take care.